Right, this is interesting. I've actually found the fault. This is an insulation fault. This is the fault when it comes up with it, right? And this is going to be good information, right? So I've got my meter on. This is the resistance, okay? And uh, I've got this on my hand. So the resistance internally is, you can see that properly, it's, um, it's about 8 ohms when I measured it last time, but the battery on my meter is a bit duff. Let's see, there you go, 8.6. 8 Keep it still. There you go, 8.9. Okay, let's just get the range on. Oh, is that right? Right, there you go. So we've got 8.5 ohms, right? Now, the thing is, is there should not be any resist, there shouldn't be any measurements to the casing. This should be insulated against it. Sorry about the wobble. So when I actually touch this to the casing, right, you see, look at that. There's six ohms there, and so nine. Do it again. Last time I did it, it was about two. So that's that's seven point four. Oh, there you go, three point three. If you can see it behind me, hand. All right. So that's like about seven. And here's a point maybe. There we go. So it's 3.3 .3 and about 7. So that's about 10 in total, isn't it? And you can see that my meter, <laughs> the wires themselves have got a bit of resistance, so there's going to be a bit of an accuracy. But what we've got there is basically is that somewhere, like if, it, if, the, if the, hang on a sec. So if the coil itself sort of started there and ended there, then around about somewhere about here, if it was, you know, like, depends on where the measurement there is a short between the internal windings and the uh, armature and the and the the splines and that's the insulation fault that's actually what it is what I can do about it I don't know because that's obviously a sealed unit so I need another one um, I might be able to get it apart but that's a heavy job because this is all riveted together so unless I can find another crashed fluent or something um, or I can deal with it some other way because the engine runs it's just what happens is that this because it's connected through the bearings to the casing you've got a short between these slip rings the the power to the slip rings and the casing the casing of the thing right the motor will work like that it's not going to be something that will stop it from and it does the car drives but it detects that there is that insulation fault which comes up and it codes out and then it says there's a fault and this part needs replacing, but I can't get hold of this without replacing the whole motor, which is two and a half grand currently. Yeah, if I have to source a motor. Now, I can get that replaced, but the problem is, is that it's not stopping the car from working. So I can find some way of either telling the ECU to ignore the insulation fault completely, right? So that... Uh, whatever the problem is it forgets about it being a problem and then the car can be driven normally which it obviously can be because we are doing um, or I've got to spend two and a half grand replacing the entire motor just so that I can replace that bit which that bit's not worth two and a half grand or if I can find a crashed fluence that I can buy cheaply like you know for some money but they're rare as rocking horse shit now so this is the problem and I think this is the reason why all right, Festus. Anyway, I thought I'd do that. This is going to be uploaded, and so there you go. And that is the fault.